Saskatchewan teachers have received a final offer from the Saskatchewan government, and we're going to vote on it early next month. And it is bad. For a bunch of reasons. Let's talk about it. So, quick bargaining recap. I've talked about it a bunch, so we're just going to kind of zip through it. I'll link some longer breakdowns below. Bargaining started in May. Teachers were offered raises of 3, 2, and 2% over three years, and basically nothing else. Saskatchewan government bargained in bad faith pretty much the entire time, and things have been ugly. There have been a bunch of strikes, worked rules, other stuff, but the, contra but the actual contract offer from the government hasn't changed. Even though the government said they were going to offer what they give to MLAs, which is 4% this year and cost of living each of the next three years, that appears to be off the table, since the new offer is significantly worse than that. Interesting, that. Almost like they're liars. So the latest offer is a final offer, and as such, the teacher is going to vote on it. Now, it's really important to note here, the government's trying to frame this as a tentative agreement. It isn't. And the head of the government trustee bargaining committee, Don Hoyam, came out and said, we have a tentative agreement. Which again, no you don't. Because here's the thing about tentative agreements. If one side says there's an agreement, and one side says there isn't, there isn't an agreement. The government's just been completely intransigent in negotiations and has said, this is the only offer you're going to get, so you best go vote on it. So I guess that's where we're at. The first part of the offer is on wages. It is three, three, and two over three years. Which is not only significantly less than what teachers are asking for, it's also less than the last offer they made via Twitter. Turns out that the actual offers are super different from the ones they make on Twitter videos. Funny that. Now, teachers are asking for a cost of living each year plus 2% each year over the next four years. We've lost a lot of buying power over the last couple of years, and our wages have lagged significantly behind other sectors in Saskatchewan's economy. Since 2017, teacher wages have increased by 7%. Compare that to the rest of the Saskatchewan economy that grew by 19% over the same time. And over these last two agreements, where we got 7%, inflation's been 15.5%. We've lost 8.5% of our purchasing power since 2017. We're just trying to get some of that back, and I don't think that's unreasonable. But wages aren't all that we're fighting for here. We're also trying to deal with class size and complexity. There are huge problems in Saskatchewan schools. Violence against teachers. There are huge problems in Saskatchewan schools. There's violence against teachers, overfilled classrooms, teachers taking stress leaves, teacher shortages, and more. And the government simply refuses to do any and the government simply refuses to do anything to deal with this. Teachers have been trying since day one to get contractual guarantees to address class size and complexity. The government brought forward a funding framework that gave a 9% funding increase this year and an accountability framework to make sure that they spend that money. But that's it. It's just a one-time funding increase. And that 9% is only enough to prevent most divisions from needing to make cuts. That's about it. It's not even going to get close to addressing the serious issues that we face. Over the last decade, Saskatchewan has fallen from the top of per-student-funded schools in the country to the worst. Our schools are crumbling, supports have been cut at every turn, and students are the ones who pay the price. Teachers are burned out, stressed, and begging for support, and all the government has to say is no. So after strikes, work to rules, and more, the government has increased its contract offer by 1% off of the initial offer they brought on day one, and they have added one sentence. The parties agree that the MOU on the accountability framework will be followed and honored. That's it. But I think it's also worth noting that the accountability framework and funding models are insufficient. They increased funding this year by $360 million, yes. But all that happens after that is that that funding stays put. That's it. It's effectively a three-year funding freeze. It's going to solve nothing. So teachers, if I haven't made myself abundantly clear here, vote no. This is a bad deal. Bad deal. Bad. No. The government's trying to make the union's position look weak by creating the illusion of a divided membership. Do you really believe that all of the fighting that we've done is worth 1% more? Because I haven't talked to a single teacher who's satisfied with it. And frankly, if you're anything like me, you feel insulted. But you know who really feels insulted? This woman. Her name is Taya Thomas. She was invited to the Saskatchewan legislature to share her story. Her daughter, Mayel, had a number of medical conditions. She experienced a lot of difficulty in her education and she wasn't able to go to high school because there was no room for her in a specialized program. And she had a condition that made her unable to sweat, so she would overheat very easily. And if she overheated, she would have severe seizures. Her classroom could get above 30 degrees Celsius. It wasn't the funding or ability to add air conditioning to the school or to provide an air conditioned space for Mayel. Now, sadly, for reasons separate from schooling, Mayel passed away at 13 years old. And when Mayel's mother, Taya, came to the legislature to tell her story, Jeremy Cockrell insulted her. He said something truly astonishing. When he was speaking about the SDF contract negotiations, he said directly to a grieving mother, quote, What do they want me to do? Give up my firstborn child? Now, he claims that he apologized at the time, but Taya says that he did not. 
Just watch this clip. I ask you about Miss Thomas. I met with her earlier this week and quote, you told her, what do they want me to do? Give up my firstborn child. Why did you tell her that? It was a really poor choice of words on my part. And uh, I apologize for that. And, and uh, I'm human. And when did you apologize to her? I apologized in the meeting with her that I had the other day. Because he says he apologized to you, yes, or sorry, when you were here to you. Um, you are saying that didn't happen. It did not happen. So what do you think about that? It's exactly as I've said. It makes me wonder what kind of person is in charge of our children's education, ultimately their future, if he can't even sympathize with just one parent. I mean, I'm he, not only once did he insult me, he did it in the chamber, he did it again in private, and again, today, he again said, parents need to be more engaged. I promise you, any medical mama like me, we are fully engaged. I asked the teacher, because I reflected on myself, I wondered, did I do enough? So I asked the teacher, and she said, Taya, I promise you, you've been doing enough since she's been here. And I'm still here trying to do more. So excuse me if I take it a little personal. I'm inclined to believe her if I'm honest. Let's see if Jeremy has the courage to call her a liar. But also, he said, quote, I'm human. I made a mistake. No, Jeremy. I think you very clearly illustrated that you are inhuman. Because that's the only kind of person who would say such a thing in that situation. And the only kind of person who would not apologize immediately and then lie about it. So I'm going to be voting no. Not only because I'm insulted by the contract, but because I'm insulted by the presence of Jeremy Cockrell as education minister. He needs to resign or be fired. This man has done nothing but piss off every teacher in the province, the public, and literally everybody. He has botched the portfolio perhaps more than any education minister we've ever had. And that's really saying something. And I can't speak for other Saskatchewan teachers, but I know for myself, my will to fight was flagging just a little bit. Honestly, if the contract was any good, I probably would have taken it. But that's not what happened. Jeremy Cockrell has decided to poke the bear. He is pissing off every teacher in the province simultaneously. He has put the fighting spirit back into all of us right before year-end. It looks like he's willing to risk year-end grades, grads, sporting events, and more entirely because he can't be bothered to give teachers a decent contract offer. He can't even be bothered to speak to parents with basic humanity. So I'll tell you, I'm very eager to vote no on the contract. I'm going to consider it a personal message to Jeremy Cockrell, and I hope other teachers in this province will join me.